Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855 855- 678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1590 WPSL Bitcoin. The debate continues. Should you buy it or should you sell it or should you just keep away from it? Chris Twain. The Silver Shield is with us now to help try to make some sense of it. Hey, Chris, man, it's been too long. How are you? <laughs> Very good. How are you? Oh, I'm hanging in, man. I'm hanging in. I'm just, we just got winter late in Florida. It's been about 50 degrees the past two days when I woke up. I guess I have nothing to complain about, but everything is relative, you know? It is. So, so to put it charitably, you are not a proponent of Bitcoin, are you? No, in fact, I think I'm the only one out there who's uh, coming out against it. Yeah, well, hey, that makes you popular right there because <laughs> a lot of people uh, don't know what to make of it, and it's easier to say no to something than it is to say yes. Now, obviously, if the existing system were going to continue indefinitely, it might have some value, but you're kind of looking at the worst-case scenario in judging Bitcoin's future value, if any. I wouldn't even say worst case. I would say the most realistic scenario. You know, here we are, five years past a institutional crisis that almost rocked the world to its knees, uh, that was saved by sovereign nations by a trillion dollar, uh, you know, banker heist. Um, you know, back in two thousand eight, people had jobs, people had uh, equity in their home, people had savings, people had retirement funds, uh, people, you know, didn't have as much debt. Uh, and now we've broken through every single, uh, you know, safety net that, uh, you know, society has. You know, people still trusted banks uh, back in 2008 and bankers, and they still trusted politicians in 2008 and, and hope for Obama. And now we're, what, five years past that, and all those problems were never solved. In fact, they've gotten magnitudes worse. And now the problems are not at the institutional level of Lehman Brothers and AIG and General Motors. They're at the sovereign nation level of, you know, Cyprus and Greece and Italy and Spain and, you know, the United States and Japan and, and, and all these nations. Even yeah, Germany, I mean, which pretends to be the most solvent nation in Europe, has got severe problems because their banks are bankrupt. Yep. And, you know, here we are five years past this institutional crisis that happened in 2008. We know that the issue is at a sovereign nation level. Uh, we know that the economy will not ever recover until all this debt's wiped away. Uh, we have the, the, the Treasury and the United States government printing trillions of dollars worth of debt. Uh, the Federal Reserve is buying up almost 130% of the, the uh, debt that the United States government is, is uh, uh, putting out there because of all the rollover yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're there. buying up more debt than we're issuing. Is that yep. insane? Yep. Um, and, you know, so we have this crisis that's being built up. And it's about to pop. I don't know when or where. I thought it would happen last fall based off of the four-year cycle. And now we have all these stock markets back up to all-time highs. And we're just waiting for this bubble to pop. And the point of this whole Bitcoin thing is knowing that we're at the edge of a worldwide unbacked currency crisis, not just the dollar, but all fiat currencies all over the world are all have the same fundamental flaw that they're just debt-based currencies and that nations that don't print their currencies like Cyprus and Greece and Ireland and France and all these places, they're going to suffer from a deflationary depression as all the real wealth is sucked out of those nations to, to pay for debt that they can't do. And then other nations like the United States and Japan will continue printing more and more money until the uh, currency that they issue will become worthless. 
So, you know, it's fun to say, oh, Bitcoin's, you know, it's a, it's worth a gamble. And all I look at it is, is another distraction to keep the masses away from the real assets that are going to save their ass when the world falls apart. You know, it's not just, you know, the dollar, it's every aspect of your life will change. Because without a functioning currencies, the your job doesn't work, the f- gas lines don't work, the food lines don't work. You have political, economic, social crisis on a local, regional, and an international scale. There will be um, uh, real wars for real assets, not bitcoins and currencies and dollars. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm putting out a video about Jim Rickards um, talking about he keeps focusing on the currency wars. The currency wars are nothing. I mean, the, the governments don't care. They'll print trillions of dollars. The real war is going to be for the real assets of the world. And that's where people need to get ahead of the curve. Stop trying to Forex this. Stop trying to Bitcoin this. Stop trying to gamble your way around this. Get to the end of the line. Get to the end of the book and see that at the end of the day, real assets, real skills, and real friends are going to save you far more than any digital hashtag uh, (laughs) currency that uh, happens. Yeah, well, you know, I've got my doubts about it, mainly because it has no tangible value other than people's willingness to accept it as legal tender. And how is it different than when you had this uh, depression script where people just uh, cities, towns printed up script because money was in too short supply because of the deflationary depression mm-hmm. and people used these scraps of paper to buy and sell stuff. Those are better than Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> so local, local unbacked currencies, um, you know, popped up all over the all of the United States of depression. Okay, there was accountability on how much was issued, who got what, um, and it, the 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 people used it to strengthen their little community. This Bitcoin thing, it's completely anonymous. We have no idea who wants it or uses it, except for people who uh, either want to view um, money laundering or something along those lines. Um, and there's there's no accountability, which is its allure to it. It's oh, it's decentralized. No, it seems to me that it's just a perfect game for scam people, scamsters to come in um, and get something for nothing. My main gripe from the very beginning is that um, you know the way that all these schemes work: Bernie Madoff, Social Security. Uh, you know, all, all these things are you get people who take something that has intrinsically no value build up the perceived value to the unsuspecting audience and sell for real assets. Um, and that's the, the, that's the thesis of all these scams. And that's the reason why this whole world is in such trouble because we keep trying to get something for nothing. And okay. it's going to be the real things at the end of the day that are, is the opposite solution, the opposite consciousness solution that is ultimately going to save people's asses when this, when this all comes down. Yeah. Well, it's a simple matter. I said it before, uh, Confidence is the mother's milk of fiat currency and fractional reserve banking. And I would also say it's the mother's milk of Bitcoin. And if there's any event that occurs with Bitcoin at this point, any event that you can't access your Bitcoin for a period of time for whatever reason, which I don't care what anyone says, it's going over a network, it can happen, that will destroy confidence just like when my internet service goes out for a couple of minutes and I'm in the middle of an interview, it destroys my confidence in the cable company and I want to, uh, I want to punch holes in the wall, but luckily now I've got my, uh, my 4G iPhone so I can use that as my backup. There is no backup for uh, Bitcoin. If something goes wrong, I don't see it. Those are the factors. Maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe they won't. But I tend to agree with you that tangibility, that something of value, whether you're trading cigarettes, liquor, bullets, guns, I'll take something I could put in my hand, and so much the better if it has a trigger, than uh, than trading bits across a network. That's just, maybe I'm square, maybe I'm old-fashioned, and I believe that uh, that a currency should also be money. But this is the way I see it. You can't have Bitcoin without confidence. Well, it, it, this co- covers a main point in the in the problem that I see with the dollar and Bitcoin is that um, since they're just currencies and not real money or a store of wealth, 
um, the currency only has value in exchange value, meaning that um, you know that it, it only has the confidence of exchanging one value to another. It has no use value. Um, so then the the Bitcoin people go, oh, uh, nothing has uh, tangible value. It's all perception. No, um, things that have real tangible value have many other uses and have many tangible, touchable. Uh, exactly. To it. Exactly what Kenton Toes from Sprott said. You know what? Gold. You know, I can uh, make a watch. I can uh, make a necklace. I can use it in electronics. Man, what do I do with a Bitcoin? You know, I can't get my hands on it. It's got no other use. It's just the same thing as a dollar bill, other than papering your walls with the stuff. Once it becomes valueless, it has no other perceivable purpose. I guess you could maybe make clothing out of it because it's uh, it's mostly cloth but there's nothing you can do with the stuff yeah well and again bitcoin is worse than the fiat dollar because at least the dollar maybe you can burn make paper airplanes yeah. with uh you know do magic origami with. you could yeah, do origami, origami right like, that has value right <laughs> um but my point minimal is, but yeah, yeah my, my point is that you, you look at silver which i'm obviously a hugely uh proponent of it has 10,000 uses. I mean, it, everything from, you know, electricity to cancer to, you know, computers to... It, Water I mean, filtration, BO. Yeah, That's, uh, this is what we're talking about here. Yeah. This I mean, has the value. It's the second most widely used commodity next to oil, okay? Yeah. Oil right now is the, what's really backing up the dollar, okay? So it's not even... Exactly. Like the U.S. dollar is, uh, you know, a debt-based instrument, but it's really backed up by the threat of violence our military, and the recycling of the petrodollar. Bitcoin doesn't even have that. Yeah. Um, silver has tangible value. It has 10,000 uses. And it's and it. so the difference is that, well, Bitcoin uh, only has exchange value. It has no use value. Silver has 10,000 plus hey. use values to it. And it has a 6,000-year history as exchange value. I, I told one of these guys, they said, give me an ounce of silver, Put me in any civilization, prehistoric to the future, and I will be able to buy food with this silver. You cannot mm. even say that you could buy food with Bitcoin at your local uh, grocery store right next door. Hey. You can't even, you know, how do you explain Let's, it to uh, the average person? What is money, right? It's, uh, it's an, a medium of exchange. It's a store of value. It's portable. It's divisible. And... I don't remember what the fifth one is. I always forget that. But the fact is that uh, this thing is not money because it's not really a store of value, and it's relatively rare. It's okay? a, and it's a it's speculation rare. too, Carrie. Like it, with money, you want to have some uh, stability in it so that the buyers and sellers know that what they're getting with it um, is going to be transferable for them to buy something else. I mean, you want a relatively steady currency without a lot of market manipulation. You'd be a fool to spend Bitcoin. I mean, it's been up, you know, 500% in three weeks or five weeks yeah. or whatever, whatever it is. It's a pure pump and dump speculation. You got guys out there who obviously were bought into this very early and would receive a lot of monetary compensation for pumping the hell out of this thing. You got guys calling it the second coming, uh, the cyber Christ, that it's going to a million dollars. Like, yeah. I mean, the, it's insane to me that this is treated as uh, a legitimate uh, form of, of currency when you have such hyperbolic, uh, you know, pushing of this stuff. Oh, and yeah. Carrie, I, I, just to let you know that I'm not jumping on the bandwagon, this was brought up to me back in May of 2011. Back, Bitcoin started in 2009, did nothing. May 2011, yeah. they had their first big interview. Um, and I was one of these bloggers that was pushed to do this because I'm one of these Liberty guys, and I'm sure that they felt like... Yeah, they came oh, up to me, too. Uh, oh, yeah. About it. So, I again, I looked at it right off the bat, and you know, I, 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 I like the idea of a decentralized currency and all this other stuff, but this thing just reeked of a scam back then. So I wrote an article called, What Will Collapse First, Bitcoin or the Dollar? And I wrote that, I don't know, June uh, 5th, I think, Um 2011, beginning of June, and 12 days later, Bitcoin main exchange was hacked and crashed and went down to one cent. Right. Okay? One uh -huh. cent. Um, yeah. And it was it remained closed for the next five days. It supposedly opened up again at uh, $17, and over the next nine months went down to $2. Um, 
that here's a couple other statistics that I found out. I also, uh, and again, I don't have confirmation of this, and I'm not a super Bitcoin uh, thing, but what, uh, somebody told me that 25% of all the Bitcoins are held by one person. Um, 70% of Bitcoins have never been used in any transaction whatsoever, and that this is a pure speculation right now, and that this only relies upon the greater fool coming in and taking a shot. That's how you know these mega millions get up to four hundred million dollar uh, things yeah. from all these you know losers who go out and say, "Oh, I'm going to go take a shot on this." And at the end of the day, when somebody gets, when a few get something for nothing, in the end, everybody else will get nothing for something. You're right, and uh, it's not a value proposition. That's what we always have to look at: uh, is there value here in and of itself? There isn't. So I think uh, if you want to. Go into it, just don't stay in it, in and out, quickly, if you want to have some fun. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be selling uh, gold and silver to go buy Bitcoins because... Yeah, treat it like a casino yeah. game because that's what it is. Yeah, you know, exactly. If you're going to have fun with it, you're going to bet on it. Make sure you don't count your money while your cards are on the table. And when you're done, cash out for real money. But it's a game. Exactly. Exactly. And on that note, we got a split. But uh, don't dash tread dash on dot me. Don't forget Liberty Mastermind Symposium taking place in Dallas, Fort Worth, right outside the airport, June 28th, 29th. Chris is uh, going to be there, and uh, we'll be, have the links will be out real soon on a Can whole bunch of sites. Of- oh, yeah. We got uh, David Morgan's going to be there, Turd Ferguson of uh, TF Metals, Michael Krieger. Let me let me pop up the spreadsheet because I can't remember anything. Oh, one of my personal favorites, Elijah Johnson, the 16-year-old who knows more than uh, the the Bernank, um, Jerry Robinson of TFM Daily. We're looking at uh, got uh, who else? We're having uh, Gary Gibson, um, Stefan Molyneux, Stefan Molyneux, uh, Jeff Berwick. And we've got a number of mystery guests. Oh, uh, also, uh, what's his name? Greg Hunter is going to be there of uh, usawatchdog.com and John Rabino of dollarcollapse.com. Uh, I could have 20 or 30 more people there, Chris, but we honestly don't have the time and we're not looking to take up somebody's whole weekend. It's more a networking thing. You get to see the people that you've been hearing from for years and then uh, you get to connect with them, and hopefully this will amount to something uh, a lot bigger than just a a one weekend meeting a year. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I'm very impressed by the lineup that you've been able to uh, to get, and I know that there's a couple other surprise guests that uh, you're still yeah. uh, can't still tell doing. can't tell about them, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have them, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have a dinner the night before, uh, nominal cost, and. Uh, one or more speakers will be seated at each table of, uh, of attendees. You get to hang out with these people. You know, one of the great things, Chris, and you've experienced it just as much as me, you know, people who are pretty big in this space are all accessible. Virtually anybody can go connect with these people and talk to them. So mm-hmm. to get to meet them one-on-one live in the flesh, really going to be a great thing. And uh, I can hardly wait to do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll be excited, and we'll we'll be down there. And I know the Mulligan Mint's going to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sure we'll probably bring in a press and actually press out silver while we're there. Oh, I love that. That'll be really cool. Let's melt uh, some uh, some planchettes too, some blanks. <laughs> <laughs> now you need a real factory, and you need metallurgists and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they can bring in one of the presses because yeah, the hand not- stamper, right? No, no, it's it's a hydraulic press, and uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get them to do that. But, oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, it, it's a it's a pretty cool experience to be able to actually be able to press out your own silver. Yeah, hey, that that's pretty cool. And uh, we're gonna have a contest. We're gonna give away. I think we're gonna give away a hundred ounce bar of silver to the winner. So okay. uh, hey, it's worth doing. We will talk to you again soon. And uh, let's keep our eyes on Bitcoin because you know this story is gonna break <laughs> one way or the other. You know it, man. You it's know. $100, and it's going to a million, according to Max. Well, you know, if one guy owns 70% of it, then it's no, like... Uh, 20, 25%, 70% have never been used in any transaction. So, like, what is it then? I it's mean, a I speculation it. that yeah. gets around 
uh, you know, all the laws out there. And, you know, at the end of the day, whoever is running this, pumping it up is going to, you know, either sell out or, uh, you know, walk away. And I mean, yeah. what a brilliant scam. Bernie Madoff, you know, had to put on a public face and, you know, <laughs> duck SEC and do all that other stuff. All he should have done is just gotten some code and uh, getting a couple influential bloggers to go out there and push it out for him and, you know, walk away yeah. got free. Well, it is brilliant if you think about it. Okay? It is. Because I would argue it could be a construed as a security in effect. You're almost buying shares in this thing because there's a limited number, but it's not a security. And then it's not a currency, but it is because yeah. people take it, but not everybody takes it. Yeah, and what's to stop, you know, uh, five other programmers from setting up five other different variants? Uh, it's funny. I did a video called Bitcoin calls Litecoin. So Litecoin's another competitor uh, of yeah. these currencies. But Bitcoin calls Litecoin a pyramid scheme. And so I went on, <laughs> you know, I was looking up Litecoin. What's this thing? And Litecoin's trading at 44 cents and Bitcoin was trading, I don't know, at $70. And on Bitcoin's site and their pros and cons of Litecoin, at the very bottom, they said that Litecoin is a pyramid scheme where, uh, you know, investors only make money from new investors coming in and buying up this thing and, and i'm like you just yeah. got done with all the pros and cons of bitcoin and litecoin and they're the exact same thing in my mind that it, all it is is you know the greater fool comes in takes a shot at this and marks up the bid but at some point this thing's either gonna end very badly because either at the end of the day you don't have anything of real tangible value when you need it um or that there's just going to be a sell-off of the people who do own it say okay i've had enough this thing's worth you know, uh, hundreds of times more than what I bought it for or what I, uh, you know, first mined it for, and I'm out. Yeah, no doubt uh, there will be a rush to the exits. I mean, this, there's an inevitability about it. And, you know, I love the idea of uh, getting something for nothing as much as the next guy. But in the final analysis, if you don't give value to receive value, then the equation, like you said, maybe I'm paraphrasing you already, if you don't give value to get value, the system breaks. Yep. That's what we have now. You give uh, dollars to get value, but the dollars have no value. Yep. And uh, when people realize that, uh, Katie bar the doors. So, hey, we'll talk to you soon. FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Don't forget, go to Chris's site. Don't-tread-on.me. And uh, can't wait for Dallas. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Fortuna Silver Mines is now a show sponsor. Under President and CEO Jorge Ganoza, it's quickly becoming a world-class silver producer with two operating mines and extensive property holdings in silver-rich Peru and Mexico that will help fuel future growth. Started in 2005, it's gone from just five employees to over 1,500 today while keeping its commitment to social and environmentally responsible operations. As of the third quarter of 2012, they've hit 80% of anticipated silver production of 3.7 million ounces and 94% of expected gold production of 17,400 ounces. By mid-2013, the production rate forecast is 5 million ounces of silver and 26,000 ounces of gold. Fortuna is currently seeking a creative M&A opportunities in the Americas. Fortuna is a proven winner with rapidly rising production into the foreseeable future. Their ticker symbol is FSM on the New York Stock Exchange and FVI on the TSX. For more information, click on their logo link on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com or go to FortunaSilver.com. Join Fortuna Silver Mines record of outstanding success.